Tiff family, Tiff family, it's your cousin, cousin Pete, man. I pray all is well out there. Uh, We're going to get to this podcast. Uh, when you become an asset, you limit your access. I want you to tune in. I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, share this podcast. I'm going to do two 15-minute podcasts right now. While I have the time, we're going to get some people in the room, and I'm going to start this podcast, dear family. I ain't wasting no time today. It's called Execution. Uh, pray all is well out there. Uh, I will be at the lake today. is throwing something big down there and we'll show my support. So, <clears throat> first and foremost, I am going to do a podcast uh, tonight too. I'm doing two, two minute, I mean, doing two 15 minute podcasts. This is the first one. In the name of Allah, the Vanessa, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the Vanessa, the the merciful, the beneficent, the merciful master, day of judgment. The alone we serve, the alone we seek help. Oh Allah, guide us on the right path. The path upon those who have bestowed favors, not upon those whose wrath is brought down, nor those who are straight. But surely I pray, magnify, amen. I thank you for all. I thank you for Jesus and the gospel, uh, Moses and the Holy Quran, and Muhammad. Pardon me, Moses and the Torah, and Muhammad for the Holy Quran. Peace and blessings be upon the mighty giants that came before us, yet to guide all of us on the right path in their righteous and holy names. I greet you all, dear family, in divine goodness and peace. Assalamu alaikum. When I say assalamu alaikum, I'm only speaking the language that Jesus spoke. If you say you are a follower of Jesus, he only spoke Arabic and he spoke Hebrew. So if he said peace be on to you, he will say assalamu alaikum. If he spoke in his Hebrew language, he would have said, Salam alaikum. Uh, remember that America was not a, a, a country, nor English wasn't in existence. Let's get to this podcast right quick, dear family. This podcast, when you become an asset, you limit your access. When I stumbled upon this paraphrase several days ago, I said, this is some good teachers right here. When you become an asset, you limit your access. What is an asset? An asset has tangibles connected to it. It has its, it has its valuable and it has value to it. An asset is something that you can hold on to. Well, that you need to hold on to. But when I took the understanding of an asset a little bit deeper, dear family, I noticed that we all talk about in the physical form of an asset when we're talking about materialistic things. So when you become an asset, you may be talking about when I become an entertainer, entertainer, when I become something a sport play to this world or entertainment to this world you consider that, that an asset well as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches to go a little bit deeper on, on what is the asset and this is why I titled this podcast when you become an asset you limit your access see the asset is the mindset when you become knowledgeable when you become a wisdom and understanding, you have so much you could give to God's people. You could teach God people. You could teach God children. You become an asset with great information. And so you have to limit your access to fools, to, to negative.
negative people, people that come among you and just drain and suck your spirit and you unable to be what God intended for you to be. So yes, you have to begin to limit your access when you become an asset to your people, to your community. You know what I'm saying? We all have grown up together. We all have suffered some type of loss, some type of deficiency uh, with our mother's own drugs, father's not there, uh, hustling on the block, doing what we do to sustain our lives in the ghettos throughout the hills of North America. We did all that. But as we got older, as scriptures say, when I became a, I put down a child at the, you know, I talk like a boy, I walk like a boy, I act like a boy, but when I became a man, I put down childish things. So when we became more knowledgeable on what we were doing, our mindset started to change and then people started to form opinions. Oh, he ain't cool no more because he I don't smoke weed. Oh, he ain't cool no more because he ain't drinking. Oh, she used to be a hoe, but now she trying to get married. You see all these stigmas and, and stereotyping uh, statements that come from people that don't want to grow, that haven't yet became an asset. They haven't yet became an asset. They're nothing to their community. They are what they are. Uh, oh, my ears clogged. They are what they are on their block. And that's the extension of them. See, when you become an asset, you walk right into the wisdom and knowledge of self. You become the God that God intended for you to be their family. That's why I say it's ye are all gods in the midst of the most high God. And the word God only means force and power. So when you no longer want to do the things of lower desires, and when you take a high road and want to become greater than what you are, what you were, there are those that among us that would knock you down and say, ah, oh, this nigga was on dope. This, this, this nigga did that. He did this. He wasn't this. But we all used to be something. We just chose not to be it any longer. When we became, when we, when we walked across our, put ourselves in a situation that gave us a greater understanding. Oh, my ears clogged. So you have to understand, dear family, those that challenge you to stay the same are not in your best interest. You have to cut the access off to them. Because now you have become an asset in your community. You have, become, you have become an asset in your family. And when God blesses you with that type of knowledge, you got to show that type of force and power. Oh, it's popping now. You have to. Because all of us are born with a purpose, dear family. You got to tap into the right source and the right energy to fulfill your purpose. So I'm telling you all out there, dear family, when you become an asset in your community, or when you become an asset mentally, physically, morally, we dealing with the tangibles of a life. We ain't dealing with the materialistic and physical of the life. When you become that and you find yourself straying away from those that you grew up with that's still on a goddamn block 20 years later, still want to smoke and drink, ain't, we ain't knocking nobody, but whatever stays the same eventually dies, dear family. You just got to get away from that because you're going to die alone with that. So understand, when you become an asset, your mindset is different. You're doing things differently. You talking different. You walking different. You acting different. There are those among us that would try to criticize or critique or talk about or 
And it's only because they're dying and you're living. My father used to say, if you ain't busy living, you're busy dying. Which one are you doing? Which one are you doing, dear family? So, Cousin Pete have, and I know, it, there's nothing wrong with knowing who you are. Don't let nobody say, oh, he think he all that, she thinks she all that. Because you have identified who you are. When you identify who you are, as Snoop Dogg say, when he got the star on the ground in Hollywood, he said, you know what? I would like to thank me. He's acknowledging his effort. He's acknowledging his hard work, his dedication, and his commitment. And he became something great. So ain't nothing wrong with Acknowledging yourself and saying who you are. Now, there's there's those that are boastful, but you ain't got to do you ain't got to do number say it once to clarify. But as the owner of Elijah Muhammad teaches, the people will tell you who you are. You, you, you know, we could declare a whole lot of things, but the people among you will tell you. If you need great, if I mean if you're great or you need a tune-up. <laughs> you know, you got baby daddies out there that always talk about what they doing and this and that. You get a hold of that baby mama, she gonna say the nigga ain't this, he ain't that, he don't take care of the kids, this, that, and the third. The baby mamas really know about them baby fathers. But sometimes you got them bitter baby mamas that um, devalue and disrespect and, and put baby fathers in position. Uh, to always fight for and never live for. Nevertheless, let's get back. An uh, asset. When you become an asset, you have to limit your access. So stumbling upon this 2023, anything that stays the same eventually dies, dear family. It's time for you to re- Educate yourself, rebalance yourself, refocus yourself, renew yourself. Because out with the old and in with the new, you now are be trying to become the asset that God intended for you to be. And that's the mental asset to your family, to your children. Something different. You want to teach them how to eat to live now. You're an asset. You want to teach your family how to eat to live because majority of our family members are always dying off from an illness and all poisons start in the stomach. So you have to alleviate what you consume in order to live longer. So you want to become an asset to your peoples. And you know, oh, he a Muslim now. He don't want to he don't want to eat pork. He 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 oh he a Muslim now. He trying to have a bow tie. What's wrong with a bow tie, dear family? Don't you know all us, all the scientists of this world and scholars of this world, a bow tie is consumed and represents intelligence. See, every time you try to step into the, your your righteous self, you have somebody that has something to say because they're not as knowledgeable or have not yet received what you received. It's time to become that asset, dear family. And once you become an asset, you limit the access from individuals that suck you and drain you. You know what I'm saying? Suck the life out of you. All they want is to, they're like a leech. They want to suck you to, uh, you can't even stand up and walk walk no more <laughs> you got to be very careful of them individuals you got to be very wise in this hour and I wouldn't give a damn if it was your brother your mother your father if they not on the right path when God has given you a blessing to override or overcome obstacles 
which brings you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you have to protect and that wisdom, you have to protect that, say you have to safeguard yourself from all family members if they try to take what God has given you to give to the people or help the people. Every time I'm around my peoples, I advocate how to eat to live. It was a time we all went out to Vegas, about 13 of us, me and the family members, and I'm talking about they want to go eat steaks. That's why they got clogged arteries now and stomach bloated and high blood pressure. And they like, man, I'm off that beef. I talk, I've been talking about that 13 years ago. But the reality is, I'm always talking what God has given me to my people. And they have been those, when I said, come on, let's go to this soup spot. It's real good. And they like, oh, man, cousin Pete want to go eat some lettuce, man. We ain't finna go eat no lettuce, man. He want to eat lettuce all day. I said, brother. Trust me, when you go to this spot, you're going to feel good. You don't see, you're going to come alive. They who robbed me for about two or three hours. So they got to the spot, ate the food, and they said, wow. See, sometimes when a person haven't been exposed to a different lifestyle, they begin to critique and they begin to shut down and, 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 and say things. It's only because they don't have the knowledge of. But once, you know, they took my advice, the story is different now, isn't it? Isn't it, dear families out there from the Berkeley, California? They know who I'm talking about. But my point is, when you become an asset, when you become an asset, limit, limit your access even in relationships, when you overcome something, find it in your heart to deal with more intelligence than emotion. And then limit the access to you until the person wanna be right by you. How does a person, when do you know when a person wants to be right by you? When one, they confess their faults. It's called reconciliation. Two, they put forth effort and work for a protracted period of time and balancing out what you gave. And then you make a decision whether or not their works have justified their, justified their actions and what they want from you, which is to renew the relationship, whether it be friends, whether it be whatever type of relationship it is. Understand this, family. In conclusion, when you become an asset, limit your access. Limit your access from those that train you, that those that are not in your interest, from those that are always talking about you. Disassociate yourself, man, because what they do is they have a they 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 have an energy that will drain you and suck you and put you back in the condition and the environment that you was in. So you have to do yourself a favor and be more responsible. And you have to say enough is enough, dear family. Limit your access when God makes you an asset. An asset is something that we all want to grow into because it's valuable. An asset is valuable. Did you know that valuable is better than value? See, valuable, value has a price to it. You're going to sell it. You're going to If the person come with the right uh amount of money, I may sell my cars, I may sell my houses, I may sell my businesses I'm, I, for the right price. I may sell it, but valuable has no price connected to it. You won't compromise. Your children are valuable. Let me tell you something about a deal. I'm going to close this and I always say it. Master P offered me what was it? I want to say 380,000 or 280,000 
been about two years ago. Anyway, he offered me a large amount of money for my first album to buy my brand, So Black and So Beautiful. How much was it? It was a little bit, it'll come to me. Um, flew me out to New York and willing to back me and push my brand bigger than what I push it. Oh, it was 280,000. That's what it was. He offered me 280,000 with incentives that would have made me maybe a million, maybe a million. <clears throat> but when you a businessman and you had and you and you already an asset. See, I'm talking about that asset mentally. See, some of y'all will sell y'all souls. Not cousin P. Oh shit. Go around me. Not cousin P. I ain't selling my soul. That's out of it, man. I, it's too much God in me to do that. It's too much work ethic in me to do that. I'm trying to pull over there, family. That's all. Uh, I gotta go pay some respect to my peoples right quick while I'm handling my business because I got things to do, but you know, um, so he offered me 280000 right? With incentives that would have got me about a million. And I looked at the numbers. I said, okay, let me think about this. I already own a house. I built a house. I already got a few dollars in my account. I already got other business ventures that I'm in. Wow. When I looked at the spiritual point of my access, I mean, my asset of me, God gave me the vision of so black and so beautiful, which represent unity. So brown and so beautiful, which represent unity. This is bigger than anybody could understand because he gave it to me in a vision like experience. So when you buy some of my product, you will get a pamphlet that teaches you my vision like experience and where I'm going with so black and so beautiful. And so when he offered me the money in New York, I respectfully declined it. And he was blown away by it because a lot of people don't understand the value of themselves. And when you have it close to a half a million dollars or on the verge of getting that, some people will sell their souls. But I've been in the dope game when I was a young dude getting a lot of money. So money never influenced me to make a decision that I, you know, that wasn't in my best interest. And those that know Cousin P knew I was checking cheddar like a food inspector in, <laughs> throughout Berkeley and the Bay Area for a very long time. And I ain't talking about no kibbles and bits. So when that deal came, it didn't interest me. The numbers didn't look right because when you look at business, you know, that's why half of these rappers is broke now. You'll get you a million dollar deal. 33 to 40% is coming out automatically. So just for example, he offered me 280,000 for the So Black and So Beautiful brand. You got 30 to 40% taken off the top uh, 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 by Uncle Tom. That's gonna leave you about 140 some thousand. Then you got to pay um, your lawyer. Um, what do you what do you want? Ten percent, seven percent, what they, you know, whatever they got. Then you got to pay your manager. Your manager get between fifteen and twenty percent of the deal. Uh, what else coming out that that thing? Um, then you got to get your music cleared. Then you got to pay for your artists. So here it is. I would have probably been left with about 80000 70000 from 280000 after you paying everybody else to produce an album and my brand gone, right? This is what I mean by understanding when you become an asset, limit your access. And you have to find more love with yourself than money. Else you would lose everything. I didn't bite on a deal. 
I left the table. He called me back to the table. I said, P, let me do my thing and let me establish myself. And then I'll come back and holler at you. He said, man, he called me about a, a couple months. And, man, I sent my condolences because his daughter just passed away. I sent my condolences to him, man. That was a, you know, I got six daughters of my own. Um, and he was like, brother, you had a, a, a vision like mine's when C. Murder was telling him to take this couple million dollars deal when they first got in the game and he, him and C. Murder almost got on a fight on an airplane going back to Louisiana because he didn't accept that because he knew he was an asset and, 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 and he would have sold his soul and he became a, the, they called him the 400 million dollar Bill Gates on what he did in accomplishing the industry point and zap will not close understand what an asset is and an asset don't always have to do with monetary value asset has to do with everything spiritually everything mentally everything of tangibles and substance that could plant you in a position where the people could love you and God but give God the glory there's going to be those among you when you're growing into this asset going to try to uh, ostracize you out uh, you ain't this because you don't want to eat a certain way you ain't that because you don't want to dress a certain way uh, don't worry you know talk bad about you because you don't want to go out and shake your ass see those individuals don't have values or principles or morals so you have to identify who you're dealing with and as an asset you understand that they really need what you have so limit your access to those who drain you and suck you it could be your children, it could be your sisters, your brother, your cousin. If they're not honest and fair, get away from them. If they're draining you from what God has blessed you with, you have to be intelligent enough to start to disassociate yourself. With that, I close. This podcast, two, 320, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, when you become an asset, limit your access. Share this pay. I mean, share this, like it, rewind it. I salute you. I holler at you, dear family. Peace.